Hi guys, I am here today to talk to you a little bit about some tips for getting through holiday sort of parties and festivities with your service dog in training. Now this is especially helpful if you have a younger service dog or one that's going through adolescence or maybe you're having some like training challenges, you're struggling with some jumping, some manners, um, anything like that. Now the tips I'm going to give you today are ones that I give not only to my service dog clients but also to the pet owners that I have worked with in the past because I have seen um, holiday parties go either really well or really poorly for our dogs. And the one thing that you want to remember is that of course with the service dog eventually we want them to be able to go everywhere with you including to family events and be able to handle the chaos and the um, activity and everything like that with ease. But when we have a service dog in training, sometimes they need a little bit of extra help with that. So well, that's what I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about today is just some tips for getting through the holidays. Now, Leo, I have an adolescent service dog in training at home now. So Leo is seven months, almost eight months old, I believe. So he is a really good puppy. I've been really happy with Leo all the way around in his formal training where he's behind. You can see former videos on that, um, as well as his house manners. So he settles pretty well. He's not hyperactive. He has pretty good manners, pretty naturally. Um, but he is a lab puppy. Um, and so he has a lot of energy and sometimes he forgets himself. And we have days where he um, he settles beautifully and he's brilliant to have in the house. And then we have days where he's bugging every living being for playtime and um, and stuff like that. So Leo, we just went through Thanksgiving last month with Leo. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm talking about today, some of these tips for getting through these holiday parties, whatever that looks like for your family. Now, the first one that I'm going to say is really think about, is your dog really ready? Take time to seriously consider whether your dog is ready to accompany you to family events or parties. Now, if your dog doesn't have good manners, if he can't focus when you ask him um, to perform a behavior for you, if he can't, especially around mid to kind of high level distractions, he's probably not ready to accompany you to a family, to a party or a holiday like gathering of some kind. Um, if you're already struggling with manners, if you're struggling with focus, if you're struggling with an ability to settle, this is probably not the best time to introduce your dog to a family event where you're going to feel like you can't leave at a moment, especially if you're bring if you're going to somewhere else for the holiday party. Um, because I have seen you know, holiday parties, we all want to we all want to talk to our families, we all want to be social, um, and if you're having to constantly manage your dog, that can be stressful for you. And it's also too important to remember that these are not environments that are suitable for teaching new behaviors. So if your dog doesn't know how to settle when you ask him to, if he doesn't, if he's already struggling with something like counter surfing or jumping on people um, or some of these manners issues, he really just may not be ready to accompany you on. To to holiday parties and I'm gonna remind you that that's totally totally okay so for Thanksgiving we had family come to us and I let Leo be a part of that um, and he did pretty well we didn't have any big issues he did have trouble settling down in that environment he was on his feet a lot he was kind of bugging people you know play with me pet me he forgot himself and he jumped on some people um, and so while he did pretty well, he's not going to accompany me for our Christmas gathering because for that we're going to my aunt's home. And um, I want to be able to be social with my family and I really just don't believe that Leo's training is ready. Oh, and there's my um, a couple. <laughs> I'm at my mom's house right now and my mom and my sister must have just come in the door. So that's my boss around is sitting just off camera and that was her barking. I'm hearing somebody come home. Um, anyway. So Leo will not be accompanying me to Christmas this year. I just, I don't believe that he's ready for this, um, for the amount of activity that there's going to be there. So truly take some time and consider whether your dog is ready for this. Um, and it is okay if the answer is no. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. So then secondly, my tip is going to be have a plan for family interactions including a backup plan for if your family does not follow your instructions. So before you you include your, your dog, your service dog in training in a big family gathering, um, one thing to consider is 
how do you want your family to interact with your dog and have a plan for that ahead of time. So for my, when I had Leo, family here for Thanksgiving, I did not mind too much how my family interacted with Leo as long as they did not give him attention when he was jumping and they did not give him human food um, or food of any kind rather, not even dog treats because I don't particularly like other people feeding Leo because um, they don't know what I know and I don't want them to, you know, I, I just think it gets very messy. So I don't really like family members feeding Leo unless I'm supervising it. So I asked all my family to please remember, you know, if he jumps on you to just ignore him and please don't give him any food. So... I asked my family to do that as they were coming in the house, and if they hadn't been able to follow my instructions, my backup plan was to put Leo on a leash and or to put him in his crate in another room, which is something we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, but have a backup plan for if your follow family isn't following your instructions. Um, that's something I see this I see this question come up a lot, both in my academy and in our free Facebook group, Train Your Service Dog with Confidence. Um, people struggling with family interactions and getting their families to follow their instructions. So what I'm going to say is have a plan, but also have a backup plan so that you're not trying to come up with that on the fly. So that if you're, ha and you're hanging out at Christmas and you know, you've got those two family members who will just not follow your instructions as it comes to your dog, um, have a backup plan ahead of time for how you're going to handle that. And how you want your dog to interact with your family is completely up to you. Um, I will just say, remember that for a young dog, it may be hard for them to be kind of on duty and forced to ignore everybody for a three hour party. Um, so I'm going to like just kind of recommend that you include maybe some formal training time and some sort of free time for your dog during your family gathering. But it's up to you and have a plan for that. Now, my next tip, and this one's really important, is going to be to watch for signs of stress, especially smaller signs of stress, things like tongue flicking, things like looking away, things like small avoidance behaviors, um, and really pay attention to those with your dog. So especially if there are going to be young children at your family um, kind of gathering. And yes, I'm looking down occasionally. I'm looking at my notes to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, but stress can kind of creep into a family party pretty, pretty slowly. And it is really, really common for me to hear something like, you know, he was really good for the first two and a half hours of the party. And then during the last hour, he you know, he, um, he started hiding from my family or he growled or he, um, stopped focusing and, and kind of lost it, you know, or something like that. This is really normal for me to, for these kinds of stories are really normal for me to hear. And that's because our dogs tend to be really good at handling the chaos and the activity that come with these parties for a short period of time. And then they start to, kind of stack up and your dog just kind of lose their attention span, especially again, if your dog is young or still in training. Now, if you have a fully trained service dog, they should be able to handle a four hour holiday party at your feet and have manners and be well behaved and it shouldn't be too stressful for them. But if your dog is still in training, if he's still young, um, it takes some time for them, it can take some time for them to be either comfortable in that environment or able to settle and be well behaved for that length of time in that environment. So one of the things to watch for is trigger stacking. Now this is a big deal here. So that threshold at the top, the red line, that threshold could either be, um, you know, depending on the dog we're talking about, it could be when the dog becomes fearful, it could be become when the dog loses his attention span and stops focusing, whatever that threshold is for what we're going to label bad behavior in air quotes. Um, and that's that threshold there at the top. Now, the per, all the cylinders are individual stressful events that if they happen one at a time, they don't bother our dogs. They're so minor that we don't see any stress signs at all. Now, individually, these stressful events or triggers don't cause any stress to happen. They don't bring our dogs even close to that threshold. But when we stack them on each on top of each other like this, as the one all the way um, where it's going over the threshold there, when we stack them on top of each other, that's when we get over the threshold. We get dogs who display fear. Um, in pets, I used to see a lot of aggression happen with trigger stacking. Um, hopefully that's not something we are seeing in your service dog because, of course, that's a really big issue in a service dog. Um, but that trigger stacking could be something like 
for example, if we have um, a, let's say, okay, let me see, I'm going to pull it back up here. Let's say that that purple cylinder is um, the stress that your dog feels around small children, okay? You, if just small children are around and there's nothing else stressful happening, then your dog is very capable of handling small children, even though it's slightly stressful, right? Then let's say that that green cylinder is, is loud noises and chaos. So um, if there's no small children around and it's just loud and chaotic at this party, again, your dog is doing really well. He's a little bit stressed, but it's really minor. It's not bothering him too much. You're definitely not seeing any big, big red flags. And then maybe that um, orange one is how your dog feels about people reaching for his stuff, like a bone. So that, that orange one would be resource guarding, something you should all be actively working to prevent in your service dogs, um, preferably with the uh, supervision of a trainer, but we want to we proactively prevent something like resource guarding. One at a time, these three stressful events don't show us any issues, right? Small children on their own, chaotic events, and then resources, stress around resources, individually are not a problem for your dog. But now let's say that we're at your party, and a small child, so the green cylinder is there, right? We're at a party, it's loud and chaotic, and a small child reaches for the bully stick your dog is chewing on. All of a sudden, we go above that threshold and we see something like a growl happen or we see something like fear happen. This trigger stacking is really important to understand as a service dog handler that you're watching for these things in your dog. Now, of course, our service dogs need to have really solid temperaments where they're really um, capable of handling lots of stress without showing any kind of aggression or fear. But this is something that, you know, with a young dog, what we tend to see is dogs who lose their focus and start to pull towards strangers or jump on people. Um, we start to see kind of any of those behavior issues happen when we go above the, above different types of thresholds. So trigger stacking applies to all kinds of things. And it's really important for you to kind of have a general understanding of how trigger stacking works and to be watching for that at these family events. So my last tip, it comes right on the end of that trigger stacking where I'm saying it's okay if your dog does really well for the first like 90 minutes of the party and then all of a sudden he starts to act a little stressed. He, we're getting a little tongue flicking. We're getting a little, he's going, oh mom, that's making me a little nervous. And that's making me a little nervous. Or your dog is starting to get a little bit like, oh, this is exciting. You know, his ability to settle and focus is slowly wearing off the longer you're at the party. Have a safe place, so create a safe space for your dog that you can put him um, if either you need a break or your dog needs a break. So have a place like a crate or an extra bedroom. Um, have something like a frozen Kong or a like a fresh new like bully stick or smoked bone or baked bone or something like that for your dog to chew on. Um, and do not be... Do not feel guilty using it if either your dog needs a break from the chaos or if you simply need a break from monitoring your dog. So Leo, during Thanksgiving, he did spend a little bit of time in his crate. And it wasn't so much because he was causing, like, like yes, he was bugging everybody. <laughs> But he wasn't doing anything bad, and he certainly didn't need the break because he was having the time of his life with so many people to pet him. But there was a period of time during Thanksgiving where I needed a break from monitoring his behavior. I needed a few minutes to be able to chat with my family without managing Leo, without making sure I'm reinforcing good behaviors, which is a bonus tip for you. Make sure that you have plenty of treats on you and you can reinforce your dog for good behavior during whatever's happening for you over the holidays this year. Reinforce them for not jumping on people. Reinforce them for laying at your feet. Reinforce them all, all the time for all the good stuff. It's really important for our young or in training dogs to be receiving lots of reinforcement for good behavior. And of course, you know, a fully trained service dog wouldn't need so much reinforcement, but a young dog does. So Leo was earning lots of reinforcements. He was having the time of his life because there are so many people to pet him and he's very social. But... There was a time where I needed some time off. I needed to not have to monitor him and manage him and make sure he was behaving appropriately. And so he did spend some time in his crate with a bully stick. And Leo is perfectly crate trained. He's comfortable in his crate. He's happy to stay in his crate even when there are things going on in other rooms. Um, so consider setting up a safe space for your dog, whether that be a crate if your dog is crate trained or if that's an extra bedroom where you can give him a frozen Kong or something like that. 
Um, but having a place where you can put your dog where he can feel safe and, and out, of the chaos, out of the chaos and out of the, the, the everything that's going on is really, really important and do not be afraid to use it. Um, oh, and I, what I forgot to mention when I was talking about stress is one last thing here is if your dog, um, remember that especially if there will be young children at this family event that you may are, be attending or parties you may be attending, that you really need to consider how you're going to manage interactions between the dog and your and the children that are at the party. Um, your dog should not have to tolerate everything young children can throw at them. Okay, don't let children grab ears, pull tails, climb on your dogs, take his stuff, bother him while he's sleeping, things like that. This is just asking for trouble. So watch your dog very carefully for subtle signs of stress around the children and remove him um, as soon as you're starting to see those. So with our service dogs, again, we want to be teaching them to, to slowly tolerate all of these things from children so that if they happen, your dog is prepared to handle it. But preparing your dog does not include throwing him in the deep end during your Christmas party. Um, things like that are not something we want to train in the moment. Those are things that we want to set up very specific training sessions to teach your dog to handle. So... Yes, I want your dog to be able to handle it if a child comes up and pulls on an ear or pulls on a tail, but that's something we want to prepare your dog for during training sessions. It's not something we want to just throw your dog in the deep end and go, okay, there are five, you know, all five cousins are here this year and they're going to be pulling on your ears all night and you're just going to have to tolerate it. Okay, remember that you're here, you and your dog, you guys are a team. And part of your responsibility as the human team member, the human partner, is to help protect your dogs from things like children constantly climbing all over them and pulling their ears and things like that. And Lyric, so just as a quick example, my boss run Lyric loves kids. She loves them. She loves everything about children. And she does not mind if they pull on her ears or pull on her tail. I still do not allow it to happen because I still, it's first of all, it's not a good habit for that child because eventually that child's going to come across a dog who doesn't appreciate it. And also, Lyric shouldn't have to, even though she loves children, she shouldn't have to tolerate that constantly from kids that are around her. Um, so think about that. So as a quick review, remember, consider, is your dog really, truly ready to accompany you to this, whatever's happening for you on this holidays, and it's completely okay if he's not? Have a plan for family interactions, how you want your dog to interact with your family, or rather, how you want your family to interact with your dog, and have a backup plan for if family members aren't following your instructions, and this very well could include that safe space I talked about. Watch your dog for signs of stress, including very subtle signs of stress, and for this trigger stacking scenario. And definitely create a safe space for your dog, a crate, a extra bedroom, something like that where he can go to get away from the from everything that's happening if he needs a break or if you need a break. And do not feel guilty for using that. All right, if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, you can always ask them inside our Facebook group, Train Your Service Dog with Confidence, and we can all work together to create some of these um, plans for how you want your dog to interact with your family, because remember, that's always up to you. Backup plans for what you're going to do if that doesn't work or anything like that. So have a, have a great holiday, and I will see you guys later. Have a good day.